Hey everyone, so today's video is going to be something uh, sort of kind of different to your traditional uh, Laurel Cardo video, traditional fish video, but it's a really important information to know before sort of even learning about animals in general. So this is what makes a species, definitions of species and stuff like that. So a species, the easiest definition is it's a biological unit and it is below genus. And species is never a sort of a set thing. It is a process, a gradient. No species is like, um, is really difficult to explain, but you are not, you do not wake up one day and become a different species. Your offspring does not suddenly become a different species. It's a gradual, gradual process. And species are given scientific names under the binomial system, which was created by Linnaeus, and it's sort of over 200, 300 years old. And subspe um, and as in other videos, species are italicised, so they are in italics, and um, the genus, and followed by the species name. The genus name is in capitals, and the species name is in, um, oh, not capitals, well, lowercase. And this is above subspecies, not included in the I, uh, the International Commission for Zoological Nomenclature, which guides the like rules on this, is a uh, variance, um, cultivars and stuff like that. Cultivars is more of a plant thing, um, but that is not included. And that is kind of like a lower unit, but it's not really a biological unit. So it is debatable how we actually define a species. So it is important to define a species because otherwise what makes one classification different from another? Why is a giraffe not a horse? Why is a cat fit? Well, let's say, um, why is Hypencistrus zebra not the same as Hypencistrus inspector or Hypencistrus phantasm? And stuff like that, a Bionicistrus Zandelis, a Bionicistrus chrysolemus. So defining the difference between them. Sorry, there's a fly in the room that's really annoying, <laughs> but it's going to be hell to get rid of. Um, so the first one is the one that everyone states, and it's probably one of the most flawed ones in my opinion. So this is the biological species complex, and this states that a species has similar, their organisms with similar morphologically, but they must successfully interbreed to produce fertile offspring. And firstly, it's, it's different species can be produced to produce fertile offspring, and this is seen a lot in fish. So the complex really doesn't work in fishes um, and also is very difficult within species and you get what's known as ring species and where subspecies sort of the distance between one um, members of one species can be quite vast and I always argue that populations of one species can be as distinct as different species so it's really important to recognize that even variants are the next is the morphological species concept, and this is defined by morphological, morphological features and characteristics. So this is probably one of the oldest and is based very much on the visuals. This is flawed because you get a lot of um, convergent evolution. So this is where two species evolve and they can be very different and then end up looking very similar. So the best example of this is dolphins, ichthyosaurs, which is a prehistoric marine reptile that went extinct and also fishes they all evolved this very similar morphology but they are not related at all and it evolved separate events so it didn't like they didn't evolve from each other and then the diversity of mammals and reptiles came from that it's really difficult to explain in some ways one is the ecological species concept and this is based on the ecology the niches and um, that species uh, occupy an ad adaptive zone distinct from other lineages so basically really based on their ecology um, their niches and stuff like that I don't really like this one I find it a bit too fluffy maybe but all are useful in their own way the evolutionary species concept is based on lineages within ev that have evolutionary tendencies, but there are gaps in the fossil record, and it's very much very similar to the phylogenetic species concept, which is groups of organisms share an ancestor.
but then there's uncertainty within phylogenetics but this one is very much based on the phylogenetics that sort of um monophyletic sort of relationship monophyly how are you going to pronounce it that this part of a phylogenetic tree that is a species and it makes makes very good sense if you're wanting to do it so mathematically because you can say um kind of like base it on time and stuff like that um the next one is phenotypic species concept and it's not bound by one concept but a set of organisms looking similar to each other and distinct from other sets so it's very vague and are quite a few in a way they all are in their own sense the pluralistic species concept is probably the best and it says that depends on the conditions that are present that the species follows a different there's well a different definition should be used for species and it's not you cannot universally like stuff all organisms into one species um concept and it, that is probably the best one because mammals i find are a lot easier than fishes um and then you get plants. Plants are amazing at hybridization, polyploidy, random evolutionary events that really do go on their hybridization. They can have one species can have so many different karyotypes, which is the number of chromosomes. And it, that is probably the biggest preventative of hybridization. Well, one of the biggest are then morphologically, they can't actually geographically meet, stuff like that. But if you have a different chromosome number, that can cause a real difference in whether they can actually hybridise. So um, if you have a different chromosome number, you might be able to hybridise once, but the offspring might be infertile and stuff like that. And interestingly, ancestrous, although those people say they all hybridise, there's different karyotypes within that one genus, so not all will be able to hybridise. And that could be a big hint whether they it can divide into different spe um, different genuses. And no doubt others have it. I have no doubt Corydoras has it. And generally, even different genuses are known to hybridise and they might not be able to produce fertile offspring, but it can happen that they can produce fertile offspring. Generally, plants prove a lot of these wrong. The amount of diversity, the amount of ability to hybridise. So, yeah it's interesting and it's important to know because you cannot say infertility means they're different species or infer even then because you get defects um or congenital issues stuff like that so it's interesting worth researching and i might do more videos on different like actual biological things um definitions and yeah um thank you for watching anyway